Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, dear friends, and welcome to our daily prayer gathering on Kardec Radio, where we're nourishing our souls always, 24-7. There is never a break in the program. I welcome you all, dear friends, and today we will be turning our attention to exclusive beneficence, which we find in the Gospel According to Spiritism, chapter 13, item 20. Before we begin, let us pray, dear friends. If you can, you're invited to close your eyes And let us envision a gigantic, powerful mirror in front of our souls. And we're turning it consciously towards on high, towards God, towards Jesus, our guide and model, towards all the spirits on high, And we're saying hello, hello God, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be in this incarnation. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to walk the earth at this very pivotal time on planet earth. Thank you for your trust. And we are here to connect our will with your will, following your guidance wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly and with conviction. We are always open to new lessons, to accumulating more knowledge and to practicing it. And today we are ready to open our hearts and minds to more information on beneficence, on loving our neighbors no matter what and who and where they are and what they do. Thank you, dear God. And we're humbly asking for permission to begin. And so be it. Dear friends, thank you for joining. It's a pleasure. So we're turning to the gospel according to Spiritism. We're going to chapter 13, and it's item 20, and it's entitled Exclusive Beneficence. Alan Kardec has a specific question for St. Louis, who is giving him the answer. And what is so amazing, like everything about Jesus' teachings and the gospel, is the questions and the answers, the information are as if they were asked and answered for us today on planet Earth. They're timeless and the guidance helps us as much as it did help our forefathers. So here is the question that Alan Kardec is wondering about. Is beneficence rightly understood when practiced exclusively among persons of the same opinion? the same belief, or the same political party. So he's wondering, is beneficence only, only to be practiced when we are of like mind? And it doesn't matter whether it's related to religion, to politics, or to any other belief we might carry or may carry. Are we only beneficently oriented towards those who agree with us? Let us see what St. Louis is answering. And he gave this answer in Paris at, in 1860. 
The answer is no, because it is especially the spirit of sectarianism and political parties that must be abolished. For all humans are brothers and sisters. True Christians see only brothers and sisters in their fellow beings. And before helping those who are in need, they do not ask them about what their beliefs or opinions might be. Would Christians be obeying Jesus Christ's precept that says to love even one's enemies if they send unfortunate individuals away because they profess a different belief system? Therefore, help them without asking them to give an account of their conscience. For if they are an enemy of religion, it will be a way to lead them to love it. Sending them away would cause them to hate it. What a beautiful piece of information for us this is. Today, St. Louis is inviting us to love God above all else and our neighbors as ourselves, no matter what the belief system is that anyone on this planet is holding. We are there to help them. We're not interested to find out where their beliefs are, where their, where their mind is going, what their mind is holding. We are only interested in one fact, and that is to be of help no matter what, no matter who it is. We won't ask and interrogate before we loan a lending hand, before we open our hearts, before we share our sentiments of love, of kindness. We're always indulgent and forgiving and always, always good world towards all without any distinction. This message is so clear and so helpful for us today as we find ourselves on planet Earth where there is such a strong bifurcation going on. One person is supporting this political leader, another one is that, is supporting that political leader. One person is pro-vaccination, another one is against vaccination. One person is a spiritist, another one doesn't believe in God. And the list goes on endlessly. But we spiritists are invited to practice Jesus' maxim of loving all. Because we can't love everyone, including our enemies, if we profess to love God. This is being further underlined in chapter and not only, but we just picked out this other item in chapter 12 of the gospel, Love Your Enemies, where Fenelon in Bordeaux in 1861, who is one of the spirits who actually also reports back from the other side in heaven and hell. He's one of the cases that is very eye-opening and educational. Fenelon in his chapter entitled Hatred here, in the gospel according to Spirit, spiritism chapter 12 item 10 he says love one another and you will be happy don't we all want to be happy friends it sounds very simple doesn't it but today we are reminded again to love one another above all he says assume the duty of loving those who inspire you with indifference above and beyond those spirits, those friends, those brothers and sisters who inspire us with indifference or who inspire us with hatred or scorn. We are above all invited to love. And to love is of course fluidically impossible to love a so-called enemy as much as we love a friend or a dear family member. But we can always practice beneficence. We can always practice a disinterested love. We can always be charitable. 
goodwill, indulgent and forgiving. He says, Christ, whom you should make your model, gave you an example of such devotion. And Jesus is our guide and model, and we do look up to him. And Jesus modeled exactly this. He was a missionary of love. He loved to the point of giving his blood and his life. The sacrifice that obliges you to love those who offend and persecute you is painful. We know that. <clears throat> But it is precisely this type of sacrifice that will raise us above them. <clears throat> that is our practice. Not to point the finger, not to put them down, not to pathologize them. No, we spiritists, as a matter of fact, everyone else too is invited to love our enemies, to practice beneficence towards all. If you hate them as they hate you, you're worth no more than they are, he says. <clears throat> Even though the law of love wants us to love our brothers and sisters without distinction, it does not shield the heart against harmful conduct. Even though we are invited to practice this unconditional love daily, our hearts are exposed to pain, to misery, to losses. But on the contrary, it is the most painful trial that is the most beneficent for us. So dear friends, let us keep our hearts open. Then law urges us with the final words of his directive he gives us. My dear children, do not forget that love brings us close to God. Love brings us close to God, whereas hate keeps us from him. And we all want to draw closer to God. We're all on the path to ascend to God. With the two wings equally strengthened, the wing of knowledge and the wing of wisdom the wing of love and charity. And we want to conclude with a piece that we found in the Spiritist magazine, item 38. And in item 38, which is entitled The Ideal Attitude of the Spiritist, which is linked from the subject matter perspective to what we've just read and talked about, Haroldo Dutra is being interviewed by a Brazilian journalist. And this Brazilian journalist asked Haroldo Dutra Diaz what should be the ideal attitude of the spiritist before the political events. And he says in Brazil, because of course this is a Brazilian interview, but we know that this is divine wisdom. It's not only pertinent to Brazilians, it refers to us as much. And he says, Araldo answers, the spiritist must first look within himself. The spiritist must first look within himself and annul all the corruption that exists in himself, him or herself. Then he must look for all the possible corruption in his home. Then he must look for it in his spiritist center. Then annul all possible corruption. We often have the tendency to bypass this one here, this part, right? Or our home part, or even our spiritist center part, because it's so much harder to look for corruption so close to home. But it is so easy to see the corruption out there in the world, among our brothers and sisters, among the polit politicians, political parties, people in power. But here, Aroldo is turning the mirror towards us and says, let's start here before we point the finger. And then he says, it is by modeling 
that the spiritist will contribute in his current moment while praying for the unhappy people of the way. Dear friends, let us follow his example. Let us follow St. Louis's example, St. Louis's words and Fenelon's words. They come from on high and help guide us. And now let us follow our Dutra's recommendation and let us pray. You're invited to close your eyes again if you can and feel yourself anchored in your physical form with your feet on the ground. Dear God, beloved Jesus, and dear spirits on high, dear, dear mentors, dear Mother Mary, and all the guiding phalanges from on high who are surrounding us and are helping us continuously to become a more God-centered, more loving and kind human being. We heard the guidance this afternoon, this evening, today, very loudly and clearly. We know that we must be the change we want to see in the world. And that condemning our brothers and sisters in their ignorance is something that Jesus clearly did not model to us. He very clearly showed us that we must love our enemies just as ourselves and our brothers and sisters who we love and that we cannot practice exclusive beneficence. As a matter of fact, we're invited to help anyone at any time, no matter what their convictions are. Thank you for helping us out. And thank you for allowing us more time in our bodies to practice to practice starting in our thoughts, in our words, yes, even in our posts on social media, in our emails, or any other way we express ourselves, but also in our actions. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for guiding us. And as we are taking this beautiful, heartfelt, open message into our hearts, we will continue this day and the days to come that God grants us to practice, to feel the goodness, to visualize the goodness to mold the goodness with all the resources we have at hand. Always, always keeping ourselves firmly connected to you as our north, as our guiding model. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for entrusting this incarnation on planet Earth at this very moment to us among others, of course. We are taking it seriously and we're committed to our inner transformation. Thank you. And so be it. Thank you, dear friends, for joining. It's a pleasure. Let me see whether I can see some of our friends. Robbie, thank you so much for joining, dear friend. Love everything for miracles they are. You are so right. Everyone is if we only open our hearts and minds, right? And Abby is saying, done. Need to change to actually be able to see. Hi, dear Sunshine. Yes, it's easy liking someone who already loves us, right? 
And it's so much easier to love those or appreciate those who are of like mind. But we are invited to expand, to dilate our conscience, our consciousness. Love everything for the miracle they are. To love our enemies is to become aware of those of who we truly are. So true. When we spot it, we've got it. Right, Ravi? Many blessings, dear friends. Thank you so much for all of you joining. And so God willing, we will be back next week, same time. And in the meantime, we have beautiful other hosts every single day conducting and being here on Cardiac Radio where we nourish our souls always for the daily prayer. God bless you, friends. <laughs>